Hey guys, this is Nick from Financially Aware, and in this video, I want to talk about the craziness that's going on in the stock market right now, and the crazy stocks that people are chasing, uh, bidding up like crazy. Um, it reminds me of the saying that don't believe a rumor until it is officially denied by the government. But in this case, with this market, it's don't believe a stock is a good buy until they officially declared bankruptcy. And so you see all these articles about Hertz, uh, JC Penney, uh, Whiting Petroleum, all these bankrupt companies are being bid up like crazy by people that think that there's some value in them or they're going to come out of it or something like that. Now I've done videos that talk about why these stocks are going to zero. So I'm not going to repeat that. You could check those out and it explains how bankruptcy works. But uh, this video is going to be about Chesapeake and why it's going to be bankrupt very soon and why you should not take that as a signal that, uh, you know, as a buy signal to buy up Chesapeake now that it's bankrupt so we could uh, you know, go sky high like Hertz has in the last few days or something like that. And even though Chesapeake has gained in the last few days a lot overnight last night and through the day, it's down like 66%. Now, if you look at a chart of Chesapeake going back a few months, you might look at it and say, oh, look, it was $40. It fell to 10. And so maybe a lot of people are buying it here because of a supposed rebound in the economy or OPEC cutting production or oil rebound or something like that. And that's the reason why these things are up because of people buying these things just based on a really flimsy anecdotal story. Like, hey, more airlines are flying, so buy oil's gonna go up, so buy the cheapest oil stock I can find or something like that. And, uh, you know, so you see here it, it jumped up from under $20 to almost $80 and now it's back to $20 but that's not the whole story if you bothered looking at a long-term chart of Chesapeake you will see that back here in 09 it was $14,000 a share now it was never really $14,000 a share it was like $70 a share but Recently, and this is just a few weeks back, uh, you could see this in like Yahoo News if you looked a little bit. Uh, Chesapeake did a one for 200 reverse split because the stock was going to get delisted. It was trading at 15 cents a share. And so they did this really drastic one for 200 reverse split, which basically means for every 200 shares you have of Chesapeake, they give you one share at 200 times the price of the old share. So when you had one, uh, 200 shares at 15 cents, they gave you one share at $30. And that's why the stock is trading, you know, 30, $40. It's not really 30, $40, it's more like 30, 40 cents. Uh, but that's the trickery they do to get the stock up, to get people back in, but also mainly to not be delisted by the stock exchange because once their price is under uh, like a dollar for a month or something, they get delisted. And so that's a trick that they use to keep their stock from getting delisted. So just that reverse split should be enough to keep you away from the stock, but obviously it's not. Um, and that recent jump is going to have a lot of people looking at it now, I'm sure, because they're all watching what goes up and chasing it up. but. Um, the, the real news is that Chesapeake has bonds to pay on June 15th and they're talking about not paying it and filing for bankruptcy and trying to make some kind of deal where they basically give over all the assets of the company to the people who hold their debt. And so here in this Bloomberg report, uh, the shale driller, which was the largest American gas producer before things turned south, uh, is negotiating a restructuring support agreement that could see holders of its so-called Philo term loan take a majority of the equity in bankruptcy. Read that again. Take a majority of the equity in bankruptcy. Okay, get that. 
uh, get that burned into your head. There is no recovery for this stock. They're going to take the equity in bankruptcy if, <laughs> if, if they even keep this on as a going concern. And down here, it shows the debt that's above the equity, meaning all this debt has to get paid off before any stockholders get paid off. So that first would be debtor in possession financing if they get any. That's, that's money they alone they get when they file bankruptcy to keep things going during bankruptcy court. And then the secured bank debt, which there's 3.4 billion of it, a second lien of 2.3 billion that's currently trading at five and a half cents on the dollar. So anybody who's uh, who own that debt sold it off because they know it's virtually worthless. And then another 3.3 billion also trading around five cents on the dollar. So that's like nine billion dollars ahead that needs to get paid before any stockholders get anything out of this bankruptcy. So, um, you know, if it wasn't clear before about her to some of these other companies, this company is even in way worse position. And no matter how much oil rebounds or airlines start flying or people start renting cars or going on vacation, it's not going to make a difference for Chesapeake. And this is their June 15, 2021 bond that expires in one year so there's you know like five payments left or four payments left and they're not going to make this june payment and this 5.375 percent bond meaning for every hundred dollars of the bond you get five dollars and 35 cents per year in four quarterly payments well it's trading at three cents on the dollar so what that basically means is there's no expectation that this thing is going to pay any more interest uh, on this bond. And that's why it's trading at 97% off of its value. And one other thing, I see people make comments when I told them that the bondholders get the equity in the restructured company. And then people have the bright idea that they're going to go and buy these bonds up for three cents on the dollar. And participate in the new equity when the restructuring happens and all that stuff. Uh, that's a pipe dream for most people. Uh, the people that buy up these bonds and then go to bankruptcy court to negotiate that thing are huge hedge funds and uh, you don't have the resources to do that and hire lawyers and all that. So don't look for, you know, another another way of buying something cheap you know oh chesapeake stock is cheap and the bonds are even cheaper let me buy that uh it's all going to zero so make no mistake about that now this video is not just about don't buy chesapeake when it files for bankruptcy or even now it's about don't get sucked into the frenzy that's going on now in the stock market um i've seen this before I seen it in the 1999 internet bubble when when online trading first came out. It's kind of like equivalent because this Robinhood app with free trading is kind of like the original online trading in the late 90s. And uh, another thing I want to point out is that the day after Thanksgiving, the stock market usually rises because most people are home and the stock market is open. And so right around the late 1990s with online trading, the days, the day after Thanksgiving, the market was up a lot because people were home and, you know, they were they had a day off and they were feeling euphoric and they were out buying whatever Internet stocks and it was Black Friday. So they were all buying Amazon and whatever. Um, now, Fast forward to now, we have like a, a, a two month long Black Friday going on with everybody stuck at home and, you know, they have this app at their fingertips and now it's free commission and the casinos are closed and, you know, Uncle Trump sent everybody twelve hundred dollars to put into their Robin Hood account. So it's kind of like a, a perfect storm of a gambling mentality and like a feeding frenzy 
on these stocks that everybody's just jumping in and out of every day thinking that they're going to get rich off this stuff uh it's really incredible and you know it, i've seen this movie before and it always ends badly so don't go don't get crazy and put all your money in any of these one stocks or anything like that and especially stay away from these bankruptcy stocks because they may go up here and there on a short squeeze but the end result is going to be zero and a lot of people are going to be left holding the bag that's just how it always is and always will be so if you like this video give me a thumbs up leave me a comment and let me know that uh if if chesapeake files for bankruptcy are you going to buy it or are you going to stay away and as always if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my channel now thanks for watching